Hi guys, how are you? Welcome to my most tutorials. Uh, this time around, we are going to be looking at life sciences, and I'm going to start with grade 10 life sciences. And we are going to be looking at the remote learning workbook. And the first thing that we are going to look at um, is just the overview of the topics that you guys should know for this term one. We have, uh, you need to know how science works. You need to know biosphere and biomes. You need to know environment and ecosystems, abiotic and biotic factors, energy flows, water and oxygen cycles, carbon and nitrogen cycles, and then the last thing will be uh, classification schemes and main groupings. So for today's lesson, we're going to talk about graphs. So we have different types of graphs that will be uh, asked. There's a line graph, we have a bar graph. Uh, and sometimes a histogram, so you need to know how to draw those graphs. Ne? So graphs, these are a way of recording the relationship between two things or between factors that can change in a picture form. And these factors, we are saying they can change in relation to each other, and we call them variables. With that being said, we have what we call an independent variable and a dependent variable. In most cases, they will ask you which one is the dependent variable and which one is the independent variable. So you need to know, and you also need to know where do you put your independent variable and where do you plot your dependent variable, okay? So graphs are therefore a way of recording large amounts of information in a simple form that can easily be understood. I, that, I hope that one is very clear. Graphs, they make it very easy for us to interpret trends. They make it easy for people to interpret trends. And we're saying, depending with the information we want to record, we can use different types of graphs. The most common graphs uh, that are used, we've got the line graphs. We will also look at bar graphs. We'll also use, look at histograms and pie charts. So those are the ones that we're going to look at uh, for your life sciences. So now, uh, before we start, we need to learn the terminology linked to graphs. We need to know the terminology links to graphs. So the first thing we have what we call the axis. The axis, we have the vertical and the horizontal axis. The vertical axis in maths, we call it the y axis. And the horizontal axis, we call it the x axis. And then we have the origin, where these two lines meet, where your vertical axis and the horizontal axis meet, we call it the origin. So the origin is the point where the x and the y axis uh, cross meet. I hope we're together on that one. Going back again to the dependent and independent variables. We say that the independent variable, it always goes on the x axis. The independent variable, it always goes on your horizontal axis. And then the opposite is true for the dependent uh, variable. The dependent variable will always be on your vertical axis. It is going to be always be on the y-axis. So the independent variable now is the variable that we cannot control. Are we together? This, is what, this one we cannot control. But then the dependent variable, this variable, it depends on the independent variable. And uh, as the independent variable, it also changes. So this one, we can control how it changes. Ne? So the independent variable is the one that we always measure. The dependent variable, sorry, is the one that we always measure against the independent variable. And then now we have the scale. This is very, very important. So this is the way to determine how to plot the information and your scale has to be uniform. I have had uh, scenarios where someone, maybe the data, maybe the height of a plant is 3, maybe 11, 3, 9, 11, 20, 39. And then someone will just arrange those numbers in that order to say, ah, the first one is 3 followed by 9. That's so wrong. So you need to have a suitable scale to say, okay, my smallest number is 3 and my highest number is 39. What scale can I use? Maybe I can use 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 
okay and then your three you see where your three would be where your nine would be you must always make sure that you have a suitable scale in such a way that your numbers they are going to fit in and the distance like for example from the origin maybe to the first block if you say it's five we expect the next block to be 10. you can't say five then the next block is nine the next block is 11 that will be wrong wrong scale wrong graph so you need to make sure that you get your scale right and then now we have heading all graphs must have a heading that includes the information on both axes on both variables out together it must have a heading that must include the information that we have on both axes failure to do that you lose a mark out together so the question will always guide you on how to write your heading because they will tell you in this is an investigation for this and that so you would know this will guide you to write your what your heading okay the heading must say what type of graph it is is it a line graph is it a bar graph is it a histograph histogram ne? so the heading must not have sorry about that so i was saying the heading must not have the units there's no need for you to put units on the heading and one important uh the last important thing on the heading is that the heading must be underlined make sure that you underline your heading and then we have got labels each axis must be correctly labeled always include units if there are any that is if they are there so your y-axis which is uh the y-axis which is the vertical axis with the one with your dependent variable label it if there are units put them label your what your x-axis as well so for you to label you get a mark so if you just draw your graph and it's not labeled you are losing marks out together and then we have got plotting points plot the points and clearly mark them on the graph with a dot especially when it's a line graph we really need to see the points out together and then use a ruler to join the plotted points don't use freehand you can always use a ruler and then now moving on to bar graphs bar graphs we are saying bar graphs are used when one of the variables is given in numbers let's just say it's rainfall uh, for the uh, for the year 2023 so year 2023 is divided into january up to december and then maybe the rainfall amount will be given in numbers in that way you are able to draw a bar graph so now here are the properties of a bar graph we are saying bar graphs have separate bars like the bars in a prism are we together the bars are separate and another thing that's very important about the bars is that is that bars are always the same size meaning the thickness of the bar has to be same throughout you can't have the bar for january bigger than the bar for february or the bar for february bigger than that of march in the case of, uh, of a scenario that, that i just gave for rainfall during the uh, year 2023 so your bars must make sure they are of the same width so you must measure and draw with a ruler okay also the spaces between bars has to be the same size you can't have the space between january and february smaller than the space between february and march once you do that you are losing a mark another thing do not draw bars against the y-axis leave the y-axis free and put your bars not to say the other bar is slipping on the y-axis that one is incorrect another thing your scale must be clearly marked and the number written next to the mark. And scaling is very important. Let's just say the, the, the rainfall, it ranges from 100 maybe to 1,000. A maybe there's a from 100, you can't say 100, 300, 400, the same spacing, but you're saying 100, the next one is 300, the next one is 400. It won't work. You, you, you look for the best suitable scale and then you draw it. For, in, for example, from 100 to 1,000, you can just work with 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Make sure your scale is correct. Because we say wrong scale, wrong graph. So you don't want that. And then it is strongly advised that a key be used. For example, A, B, C, or 1, 2, 3. It's always important to put a key to show us 
maybe you colored your bars this this bar with this color is for what ne? also do not write in the bars do not write in the bars to say maybe the bar for january you write january inside the bar no don't do that you rather write on the x-axis where you are going to write months of the year maybe underneath you can put january or you can make a key on the side that's for a bar graph like and then the next one it's a histogram so histograms are used when information is presented in continuous groups this is now continuous is different from the bar graph so on histograms most of them they don't have equal bars don't expect a histogram to have equal bars i've i've come across in a few in maths where the bars will be the same length but it's not all the time so here the bars are not of the same length and one most important thing most people they confuse a histogram and a bar graph when you come to a histogram there are no spaces between we don't have spaces between a histogram and then like i said uh bars are not always the same then they're not always this, of the same width they are different and then the scale must be clearly marked wrong scale wrong graph make sure make sure please make sure that your scale is correct wrong scale wrong graph okay and then your advice as well to what to make a key and you don't write in your bars do not write in your bars and lastly the most important one <laughs> oh it's my favorite anyway the pie chart we need to know how to draw a pie chart uh, yeah a pie chart it's, it's it's also very easy to, to to visualize you know it's very easy looking at those slices most of the time most of the time we make them colorful so now how do we draw a pie chart a pie chart so you add the numbers and get the total after getting the total you convert the total to percentage i'm sure that's not difficult converting it to percentage and then you can convert the percentage to degrees Remember, it's a, it's, it's a pie, that pie chart is a circle, and a circle, we say it has a, uh, it's a revolution, and it has got 360 degrees. So now, that's another way of doing it, where you are, con you are adding the total, and then you convert um, to, to percentage from percentage to degrees, or you can add the numbers to get a total. After getting the total, divide the value of the portion by the total. After that, you multiply the answer with 360. I prefer the second method. After adding the total, maybe in, 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 the, in this case, I have a total of 40. And then it's divided maybe, for example, here we have uh, different food types, which is lipids. Lipids is 10, 10 portions of lipids. Proteins is 20 portions. Carbohydrates is 60 pro, uh, portions. So for this one, the total 40 plus 20 plus 10, we are getting a what a total of 70. After getting a total of 70, now I need to know to say the portion for lipids, how many degrees is it? So the portion for lipids, I would say since it's 10, I would say it's 10 over 70 times 360. 10 over 70 times 360, and then I get my angle. So in this case, the angle for lipids is 50 degrees. And then the angle for proteins, for proteins 20, so you say 20 over 70 times 360, I'm getting 105 degrees. And then the last one, 40 over 70 times 360, we're getting 205 degrees. So at the end, you have to check your degrees. If you, if, if you add all of them, are you going to get 360? If you get 360, then it means you are in the right track. You did not make a mistake. Ne? Also, as you are drawing a pie chart, remember, to use a key for the pie chart and also you don't write inside the pie so now that you have your 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 your, your angles when you draw a pie chart you don't use freehand get a, a, a compass draw your nice circle and then use your protractor to measure the angles and you draw your your angles accurately maybe you can shade it differently for the color for lipids the color for for um, the color for proteins and also the color for carbohydrates after that you can give us a key if you use free hand you, you lose a mark so make sure you don't use free hand and then on our next lesson we are going to be looking at scientific diagrams scientific methods and also how we do calculations 
So that's all for today. See you on our next class.